What's up guys, Matt Day here, and we are in my dark room, uh, my very hot dark room right now. I'm gonna be sweating like crazy, uh, but I'm gonna be developing some film and I'm gonna be answering some questions that you guys have sent in on Instagram. You might be able to hear throughout this video my daughter Nora just on the other side of this room. She is running around like crazy right now, so you'll have to excuse that. Uh, but I've got a few rolls of HP5 I'm gonna be developing here. Uh, I've got HP5, I'm surprisingly, I've been shooting HP5 at box speed rather than push to 1600 like I normally do. So developing times are gonna be pretty short today. We're uh, gonna be at about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, perfect. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix up the developer. Uh, I'm developing with Ilfatech HC. This is my go-to developer. If you guys are familiar with this channel, you've heard me talk about it a million times. That's what I always use. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this in. All right, we'll go ahead and get started, start the timer. So, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some questions here. Um, you guys have sent in a lot of questions just on Instagram. Uh, typically that's where I go to to ask questions, or to ask for questions, I should say, just so I can bring some people from Instagram over here. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna kinda scroll through and grab some questions that I think a lot of people would be interested in hearing. How do you feel the difference between rangefinder and reflex cameras? Um, if you are familiar with this channel, you know I'm a big fan of rangefinders. I find them to be really, really fast uh, in, in terms of focusing. They're really, really quick to focus. Uh, they're quiet and uh, it's pretty nice to be able to shoot with stuff like that uh, in certain situations. I don't think they're ideal for everything, uh, but I do like using a rangefinder uh, quite a bit just because it's pretty quick and I'd like to shoot quick. Um, but if I'm shooting like portraits, things like that, where I can kind of take my time a little bit more, um, and I'm really, really mindful about what's in my frame and what I'm going to be cutting out, you know, I don't want to cut off someone's arm or head or anything like that in the frame. So, uh, for stuff like that, I want to make sure I'm using a, uh, an SLR that way I can actually see exactly what I'm getting out of the photo. So, uh, I guess it really just... It kind of depends on what exactly I'm going to be shooting, um, but for just day-to-day -day stuff, I definitely prefer the rangefinder just because of how quick it is. Gabe asks, what did you learn from the brewery show after it was said and done? Um, I'm glad you asked because that for me was a pretty big learning experience, just uh, approaching a project with a really limited amount of time and trying to shoot it and put it together and everything. Uh, it came and gone pretty quick. Uh, it really kind of felt like it flew by. Uh, the, the weeks, well, <laughs> the whole thing was pretty much weeks leading up to it, but uh, I guess just the last week uh, of shooting for the show, it felt like I didn't have enough time at all and I was really kind of stressing it. Um, but all in all, I think I learned a lot just about uh, kind of going with your gut and not overthinking things too much just because I didn't have the time to think. Um, which I think can be a good thing and a bad thing. It depends on what the project is and I guess kind of what your approach is. I tend to get stuck in my own head way too easily about, you know, things not working well or not being worth it. And, you know, I feel like if I had the time to really kind of psych myself out, I could see me just being like, it's not even worth it. I'm not prepared for this. I shouldn't even do it. And I would have just mentally talked myself out of doing it in general. So uh, I think just having that time frame taught me a lot just about going with your gut and just, uh, you know, getting it done rather than worrying about everything being perfect. Nolan asks, what chemicals are you using to develop these days? Um, this is something that has not changed for a long time. I use Ilfatech HC to develop and my fixer, I use Photographer's Formulary TF4 um water for stop bath i use a little bit of kodak photo flow that's it that's my whole chemical setup super easy uh really consistent results this way i've been using these chemicals this whole combination for years and i really don't have any reason to try something else do you think at one point when they get a little older that you'll teach elliot and nora photography um, if our kids have any interest in photography i would love to put a camera in their hands and just see you know what it is they shoot uh, I definitely don't want to force it on them just because, you know, I want them to pursue whatever it is that they want to pursue, um, unless it's hard drugs. 
But, um, you know, if they want to pursue photography, I'm all for it. Uh, I feel like it'd be a lot of fun whenever they're a little bit older to give them like a Holga or an Instax Mini, something like that. Just something quick and simple for them. And, or even just like a little 35 millimeter point and shoot. Uh, anything like that I feel like would be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, if they're interested in photography, I will be passing down a lot of cameras regardless uh, I'm sure so uh, hopefully they'll appreciate the cameras at least okay so the developer is done I'm gonna let this stuff rinse for one minute under the faucet just water for stop bath if you're using photographers formulary TF4 for fixer and uh, that makes it super super easy okay so I'm gonna go ahead and let the film rinse for a minute just let it soak in the water and I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to thank our sponsor for the day which is Skillshare if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online platform where you can take classes on all sorts of different things like photography, graphic design, social media, you name it. They have classes for all kinds of different things. It's a great platform. It's taught by a lot of great teachers that are actually working in the field for the classes that you're wanting to take. They give you assignments, they give you feedback. It's a really cool platform. And the nice thing about this is Skillshare is offering a deal for my subscribers. So if you want to check this out, head on over to the link in my description and if you use the promo code MATTDAY2, Skillshare is going to give you two free months of their entire library. I feel like I need to mix up some fresh fixer. That stuff's not looking too good. If you had to scan 35mm on anything other than a pack-on, aka something more affordable and maybe more readily available, what would that be and why? Well, actually, myself, I haven't used my pack on in a long time. I sold that way back when, and for quite some time now, I've been using exclusively the Epson V600. And this is not the fanciest scanner out there by any means. I think I paid anywhere between $150 and $200 back in 2012. So I've had this scanner for a long time, uh, but it works. I can do instant film, 35 millimeter, and 120 film as well. So I've been using that. Uh, it's again, not the greatest thing out there, but it does the job for me. The only downside I have to that is that it takes a long time to scan. But if you want to see, you know, what it's like to scan with that, I have a video that I've done on that in the past. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for that so you can check it out. Um, I believe that video, it was all 120 film that I was scanning. But uh, if you watch any of the videos on my Jackson project, all the film there I scanned with my uh, Epson V600 and that whole thing was shot on 35 millimeter film. So uh, the V600 is great. They have other new models. The V700 and 750 were the bigger ones. And then I think just in the last couple of years, they came out with a V800 and V850. So there's a lot of options out there, but Epson flatbeds are super available and really, really easy to use. Does a zine have to be constructed in a certain way? I mean, does it need to have a coherence in the entire set of pictures, or can they be randomly selected without any link between them? A zine, a photo book, a blog post, anything can be entirely whatever it is that you want it to be. Uh, I think especially with zines, because they're so uh, easy to make, low cost, uh, they're really accessible for pretty much anyone to make, you can make it however you want. I think that's, uh, mainly the biggest draw towards making a zine is just the ultimate freedom of it. So uh, regardless of what the project is though, you can put out whatever kind of photos you want. If you have in your mind a way that all these photos are connected, they don't have to be connected for everybody else. They can be entirely up to you. Um, not everybody's gonna like your work. There are tons of people I'm sure that think I should never you know, pick up a camera again. And that's fine. Not everyone is going to like your work and not everybody has to appreciate the way you do it. Uh, I think if you're ultimately doing something for yourself, you should just keep it that way and make it however you want to make it. Did that make sense? I think it made sense. All right. So before I rinse my film, I have to take a little peek just because I, I still, I always do this not to see that there are photos there because I know it'll work but just to kind of see the photos. Yeah, I'm stoked to see those. Those are, I've been shooting obviously a lot of family stuff lately. Um, I guess I've just kind of been shooting. I haven't been shooting a ton lately, to be completely honest. Um, after the Jackson project, I kind of just wanted to take a little bit of time to not worry about shooting anything and just kind of 
give myself a, a break, I guess, a, a mental break, a creative break, whatever you want to call it. Um, just not really worry so much about shooting and only pick up the camera when I really, really feel like it. Um, so I haven't been shooting as much as I used to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this and then I'm going to talk a little bit about that. That's something I've wanted to talk about in a video for a while now. And actually, uh, I think someone left a comment asking about it. Any future plans for a photo book? Also, did having a break from photography, which I assume we all do, re-spark your enthusiasm for, for photography and maybe try some new things such as style, color, etc.? Um, future plans for a photo book, I am going to do a book on uh, cemetery photos that I shot of my dad and just cemeteries while we were out working. Um, that was something that I was just always taking photos of throughout the years, never really wanting to do anything with them. It was just for my, you know, uh, own enjoyment. But now I think it would be appropriate to do a book, so I am going to be doing that in the future. Um, but as far as taking a break, um, or at least just not forcing it so much, has that made a difference? And I think it definitely has. Uh, for me, I just, I got to a point, I think especially from working on that show where I was, it was a lot of, you know, stuff being forced within a small amount of time and it was enjoyable, but I just felt like I needed a minute to just kind of like catch my breath and do some other things. And I've been crazy busy with work and the kids and, you know, a lot of stuff goes into that. And I think that for me, at least I try not to push things too much or, force things, you know, as far as taking photos go. I, I feel like I should keep it, uh, you know, if, if it's stuff that I'm only doing for my enjoyment and not a job, I should, you know, only do it when I really want to do it and not feel like I have to do it. Which is another hard part about all this because with this YouTube channel, I want to be able to make videos that are relevant and things that people are going to enjoy. But whenever I'm not shooting as much, I try to think, well, maybe I should shoot specifically, you know, for the YouTube channel or shoot more because of the YouTube channel. And there's like all these different things going on in my head where there are days where I just may not feel like shooting, uh, or at least there were days like that. Um, now, you know, I've, I've kind of fallen out of that and I'm back to, you know, wanting to shoot a lot more, but there for a few weeks for, you know, maybe four to six weeks, I was just kind of wanting to take a break and that was hard for me to do whenever I need to make YouTube videos and things like that. So it's been a really interesting kind of thing for me to to take a little bit of time to not focus 100% on shooting, uh, but it's been really nice. I think for me it's, it's kind of opened my eyes up a little bit. I've been a lot more uh, kind of like on the outside looking in and thinking a lot more and not really shooting and then looking at the images and seeing what I get out of them but more of just observing, observing other people's photos, observing my own photos while I'm out and not actually out shooting, just looking for photos without even having a camera on me. Um, but just seeing what I kind of get drawn to and seeing like, okay, if I had my camera, would I actually stop to take a photo of that? And if so, why would I? And if I wouldn't, why not? And just really, really introspective and kind of hands off for a while just to think, and uh, it's been a really weird thing because I, I don't think I've ever gone that long shooting that little, um, probably since I picked up a camera. Uh, it's been a really, really interesting and kind of weird time, uh, but it's been enjoyable. So um, I feel like I could talk a little bit more about that. Maybe I've already talked plenty enough about it answering that question, um, but it is something that interesting is interesting to me. Hopefully it's interesting to you guys and I can talk more about stuff like this. If you want to hear about it in a, view, a, a separate video in the future, uh, just let me know. And one more question because this is a really good question. I have to get to it. Do you worry about being too or not critical enough on your photos? By this, I mean, do you sometimes wish you had an external editor to help turn your photos, if it's shot as a project, into something more coherent? I'm currently traveling for a year and I'm shooting pretty much everything. I'm doing mild editing of which photos I'm releasing as I travel. However, when I'm done, I, wanna know, I know I want to create a few bodies of work out of all of my photos. I just worry that I'll be too emotionally attached to my photos. Long story short, self-edit or external edit. Love the channel. Um, thank you for one, uh, uh, enjoying this channel and also for a really good question because that is something that I think a lot of people struggle with because for me, I bounce back and forth on this idea because there's the argument that you don't want to be too emotionally attached because you may have this bias towards it because you know you found the photo and you ran over across the street or you got in your car and you took off because you saw how amazing the light was 
and you were just really excited when you were shooting and you have this whole bias towards it because of the experience of shooting it. Whereas in reality, it might not be a strong enough photo to stand with the rest you have over here, or you know, it might just not be a strong photo in general. Uh, so there's that argument for sure, where somebody else, they don't have any bias to any of this. They can look at a whole set of photos and be like, no, that's, that doesn't cut it because that's, that's not as strong. So that's a solid argument there. But then on the other side of things, you also have the idea that it's your work. You're shooting for yourself or you're, you're trying to say something yourself. And, you know, as I feel like in the traditional art world, it's probably not uh, you know, the most common thing for people to self edit because there are people who are just editors and they only do that specific thing for other people's work. And I get it. It has its place. Um, I'm just trying to argue on both sides here, uh, because I bounce back and forth on that. I think, yeah, well, it, it might help to have somebody else who doesn't have any emotional attachment if they can look at it and just look at them strictly as photos and how strong they are. That's great. But at the same time, it should ultimately be up to the photographer to put out into the world whatever it is they want to put out there. Nobody else might like that photo, but if you like it and you feel like it's something you want to be said uh, or something you want to say, if it's something that needs to be said or shown, then I think you should go for it because you're the photographer. You should make the final decision. Um, and that's not to say you can't have a little bit of both. You can grab other people's input and you know hear what they have to say and hear them out. But at the end of the day, I think you should definitely do what you feel is best for your own work. And that is gonna do it, guys. Uh, I'm going to hang up this film and let it dry and scan it. Um, probably next week, I'd say I will probably share kind of some uh, of the recent photos I've made um, during this little hiatus, just because I feel like it'll be interesting for me to see in this amount of time where I haven't shot that much, what have I been shooting and how have I been shooting? Is it any good? Um, probably not. Uh, but I feel like it might be interesting. So probably next week we'll dive into that and I'll kind of walk through some film scans and we can talk about it. So if you guys have any questions for me, again, let me know in the comments. Really, really appreciate the support and I'll see you guys next time.